Okay. She's been in ACC for the last 15 minutes. So now seven, seven hours into the shift, I was on my break and five minutes into the break, I had to be called. I wish we are better staff, somebody who's senior to take the call. I am exhausted, as you can tell, but looking forward to go home and tomorrow is another shift. I can feel a pulse. I can feel a pulse as well. There's a really good radial pulse. Yes. Excellent, so it was a good CPR. This is A&E working at its most effective, but it's intensely hard work, involving mental and physical strain in an environment where there's no room for error. It's a workload few can stand for long. At 50 or 55, you cannot be doing four nights in a row. I mean, it's not, it's just impossible physically. The last three weeks I've done two weekends um, and had one off. Um, and I'm supposed to, if I stayed on the road, I'd be on nights over Christmas, which wouldn't be negotiable if I was, you know, permanently here on the road. So it definitely has an impact, you know, I'm having to say no to doing a lot of things with friends and family. The road is pretty tough and I see the Regs doing their rota and they're doing lots of nights and late shifts and I don't think it's very flexible. I'm moving to Sydney. The work-life balance over there is better. So many staff have left or moved on that a and &E depends on locum doctors that work in a freelance capacity alongside regular staff. You are much better now. Okay, she's saying take it off. We have to take it off. I don't have problems getting shifts because the numbers are on my, are on my side. Basically no one wants to do A&E past junior doctor level. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of things that put people um, off from doing it as a career. I don't think it's a coincidence that A&E is one of the most unsubscribed specialties. People look at A&E and they look at the shift pattern, they, they look at the intensity and they think, no thanks, and you can understand that. It's a gruelling job, emotionally, physically, mentally. Sometimes it feels like a conveyor belt. Deep breaths. And the hospital is built for, I believe, about 90,000 patients a year and it receives something in the region of 140,000 patients a year. So there's a simple numbers problem. Today, like most days, the hospital is full, producing a blockage in a A&E. Patients can't be transferred to a ward. This places a huge burden of stress on A&E staff trying desperately to move patients through and prioritise care. There's another patient just come in, but I've got no space at the moment. Hello, go on. Okay, we've got another call coming in. What is it? 28 year old. No, no, no. Quite often this happens in emergency department where you get one or two or three calls unexpectedly and you are tied up with, with spaces, especially at this time of the year. She's, she has had all the treatments she needs. She hasn't got any space either. MAU. So you have to juggle, give priority, uh, quick decisions, and uh, do the best you can. This is definitely him. Yeah. In the midst of the daily firefighting that is A&E, a patient with a severe brain injury is brought in. Our impression is that he probably has had a bleed inside his head. Uh, so we're going to do an urgent CT head on him and take it from there. So looking at this, you can see this large white area. This represents blood. This one represents swelling of the brain. It does only have one out opening, which will be this one. And once your brain tissue goes through that one, you will cone and you die. Yeah. I've got another call coming in. OK. After discussion with the neurosurgical team, the decision is taken that the patient is inoperable. This patient will never regain consciousness, and Goran has to break the bad news to the family. Stress, frustrations and long hours can lead to emotional and physical exhaustion. The demands of one of the toughest jobs in medicine sometimes take their toll. Sad. Uh, mentally exhausted. It's a second bad news I'm breaking to two families today. It affects you. I mean, yes, I know, you look at it as your job uh, sometimes. You love it, doing it, to help out people. Uh, but at the end of the day, you are a human being. It affects you at some point. It, it gets you. It is, you can't control it. You, you, you do have a defence to a degree, but I feel sad.